And many thanks for staying with us this beautiful Monday morning. We have Opener Bon Katare uh, on standby. He joins us on Off the Press. Opener Bon, happy holiday and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Messi. Good morning, Nigerians, and uh, happy holiday. All right, then. Let's take a look at the Punch newspaper. As always, we run through the pages of the National Dailies and we have our guests, you know, share their thoughts on the big stories. On the Punch 2023 budget, federal government plans 1.35 trillion naira war chest against Boko Haram and bandits. I find that really interesting. On the need to acquire fighter jets, ammunition, and budgets, 1 billion naira for terrorist prosecution. IG Embraxon Road Patrol in Northern States and promises adequate security. That's what we find underneath the board caption on the, the, the Punch newspaper. Muslim Muslim aggrieved APC Christians to dump Tunubu and Shatima. Federal government borrowed 22 trillion naira. Foreign education gob $609 million, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Controversy surrounds alleged release of 101 Boko Haram terrorists. Presidency, Atiku, Governors, IU begin campaign in Uyo, uh, that's uh, the capital of a Kwaibum state. Forex scarcity hits gas suppliers and price hike eminent. Shareholders knock Kogi and group alleges exploitation. NDLEA seizes one billion trauma doll at Lagos Airport. Hoodlums rape Quara varsity students arrested with 87 phones. And uh, internet fraudsters contact Facebook herbalist, dismember man for ritual. Uh, you also have a picture, a pictorial representation of a pro Tunubu rally ground yesterday, uh, APC. Very excited. That's what the punch is quoted to say. Well, let's move away from the punch as we have the leadership newspaper. The leadership says, hell or after hell, it's Lokoja. Let's not forget that a lot is going on. Uh, prayers and thoughts, but we're also hoping that, you know, actions would also be greeted with all of this, with, with all of this thoughts as Lokoja is facing uh, a serious flooding issue. There's also a pictorial representation. If you look at the front page, you see that. Very saddening. And uh, you have uh, this paper saying that they deployed drones in telling the story of the misery of many dead and displaced persons and businesses ruined by the floods in Niger's north central region. Transporters hike fare as fuel scarcity lingers. Uh, transporters hike fare as fuel scarcity lingers. And there might just also be a lot of connection, you know, with the situation in Lokoja. Now, uh, just before we move away from the punch, I beg your pardon, the leadership newspaper, Mass decession uh, retirement looms as military proposes new service scheme. That's it on the leadership. This day newspaper is the next paper for us. Emerging business leaders from North matching tech unicorns of the South. They are bold, audacious, and ready to take Nigeria to new frontiers. Now, there's also a picture represent a pictorial representation to that you know story. Buhari grieves as Anambra recovers 16 borders in boat tragedy, and a federal government words into Dangote Kogi government's dispute. PDP kicks off presidential campaign in Uyo, and that's it on this day newspaper. Now, quickly. We'll turn our attention to the Daily Trust before we have a guest share his thoughts on uh, some of the headlines. On the Daily Trust, how 62 airlines went moribund since 1960. How 62 airlines went moribund since 1960. Multiple charges, harsh business environment responsible. Uh, that's what operators are saying. Need for alternative funding. 
3,000 rendered homeless as flood hits 17 emo communities. A non-disclosure of lifted crude court freezes three oil and gas firms' accounts. How flood submerged 4,400 hectares of rice in Nasarawa. It's a lot for, you know, food security. An Ambra boat accident, 16 bodies recovered as Buhari orders rescue operation. That's uh, the boat accident. Very unfortunate. Dangote to approach court as uh, Kogi moves to recover uh, the company. These are some of the headlines this morning on the Daily Trust newspaper. Okunabon Katara is with us. Okunabon, thank you for uh, being with us this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you. Thank you once more, Messi. All right. Let's start off with, you know, the punch. On the punch, uh, we have the 2023 budget as, you know, focus. And the federal government is proposing 1.35 trillion naira as a war chest against Boko Haram and bandits. However, uh, we also see that uh, for, uh, you know, the fight against terrorists and uh, persecution, the federal government has set to acquire fighter jets, ammunition, and has budgeted, uh, there's a budget of one billionaire for all of this. What are your thoughts, especially when we understand that there's also a lot uh, that happened in 2021, you know, or the budget that we have over time for the fight against terrorists and all of the equipments that we have actually purchased. But it feels like, you know, the fight against terrorists, bandits, and what have you, is still on the high. Okunabo? I've lost, yes, I can hear you now. I lost you at the point. So I'd like you to share your thoughts on a federal government's proposal or plans to uh, spend 1.35 trillion naira. This is like a war chest against Boko Haram and bandits. Well, I heard that. I heard that. So my question is, um, what do you make of this, especially when we know that over the years we have you know, spent so much in terms of defense. We have acquired, you know, different uh, jet fighters and what have you, but we don't well, seem to be victorious Messi, against the fight against Messi, bandits the, and Boko Haram. Messi, the, the, uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. What, what we are bothered about is the efficacy of the expenditure if it's actually going to produce the desired result. And because if we go by antecedents, you realize that the issue of banditry has become uh, of, uh, Boko Haram banditry, kidnapping, what have you. Those issues have become gravy train for the military top brass. I'm going to use uh, the immediate past service chiefs as examples, I'm talking about Buratai and Co, where billions of Naira were spent, purportedly spent on the fight against crime and criminality by these bandits. And when their successors came into office, they said, including the present uh, chief of general staff and all the service chiefs, Say the chief of army staff, who was not uh, at that time the chief of army staff, because the man died, in, his predecessor died in the plane crash. But even the NSA corroborated the story that all the monies that were released to the former service chiefs could not be accounted for, and there was nothing, no purchase on ground to justify the release of those monies. So that is why we talk of the efficacy of the expenditure. Are we going to produce the desired result, or is this now a gravy trade? In other words, a conduit pipe is now a, 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 an opportunity for these uh, service chiefs to test out or line their pockets. That is our real worry. And again, if you look at uh, the fight against terrorism, well, the present service chief and the president chief of general staff, I must commend him, has performed creditably thus far, but not as if uh, he could justify all the monies released to the Ministry of uh, 
is it a defense? Could be justified because I think these terrorists, to a very large extent, are almost, almost winning the war. Because if today you say you captured a particular community, by tomorrow the terrorists would have raided, invaded, and captured three other communities. So it's, it's a convoluted situation. Nevertheless, why we have to commend the presidency for General Star for what he is doing, a man who will not even make so much noise about his successes, if you even imagine the way the remaining uh, adopters were released, train adopters were released. He didn't make much noise about it. It was not an empty vessel. Not like these other ones that will leave one person and will want to make, uh, turn it into a, a one media piece. But I think that the major problem Nigerians are having is not just the money that has been budgeted for this, but the issue of the misuse of those money that have been budgeted. And that is why whenever they say X amount is budgeted, uh, uh, to fight Boko Haram or insurgency or what have you, a lot of people impugn the sincerity because it is seen as one country fight, as an opportunity for these service teams to make a lot of money, to feather or line their pockets. And sadly, we have a president that is not even bothered about the corruption in the defense ministry. Rather, what he does is to reward corruption by promoting all those that were accused, not by Nigerians, not just by the whole uh, alloy, not the other Nigeria, but the NSC, National Security Advisor, and the present service chiefs. These are uh, weighty allegations, not coming from an uh, ordinary Nigeria. And Mr. President took uh, all of those, uh, I, don't want, I wanted to use the word, but we're on air, to honor those characters decided to promote them and make them ambassadors. In other words, insulating them from prosecution. And I strongly believe and call on whoever will succeed, Mr. President, to investigate those allegations, to investigate those claims. We have the NSC, we have, I'm telling you, not a lot of witnesses that will come out to substantiate in court the allegations prepared against those service chiefs. So my question here now is, do, do you think that finance is the issue? You know, because every other time we seem to be, you know, well, paying attention to it. I mean, when we talk the about issue, the finance... They said they spend it... Wait a minute. They said they spend this money on purchase of arms and ammunition to fight the war. That is, that is, what, that is their claim. So, of course, you can't go fight... Because if it's out of the technical know-how, I believe our soldiers are, are have what it takes to fight this Boko Haram. In as much as a lot of people say, because it is it is not a conventional warfare, therefore it's a little bit uh, complicated. But I don't think so. The truth about it is that you're talking of encouragement, you're talking of incentives, you're talking of uh, commitment, and that's what I'm saying. When these money are released, the service chiefs don't even, it doesn't even trickle down. First, they don't buy the equipment, so it's not difficult to fight the Boko Haram. You can't fight them without equipment. Number two, you get that there are no incentives. And like uh, when some of these uh, adopters were released, they said it as uh, those who are going to pay ransom said on their way, they meet about three different uh, checkpoints. The first one will tell you, my dear, we, are, we apologize, but you have to give us our own cost. The second one will tell you, my dear, we apologize. There is nothing we can do about this. The federal government is not taking care of us. They sent us here to die. You know, that's what I mean. So you need the money because you need to buy equipment. No doubt about that. But it goes beyond the money. It has to do with incentives and commitment by both the federal government and the soldiers on ground. Because if those soldiers on ground know that any day they die, they will not die in vain. They will put it, they will put it their best. That is number one. Number two, if they are also encouraged, that's why I talk of incentives, if they are also encouraged and properly equipped, you cannot send a man to go and fight Boko Haram where you've not paid his allowances. You cannot send a man to go and fight Boko Haram where he's not well equipped. You are not bothered about his welfare. How do you think it's going to be committed? That is going to be compromised. That's the point I'm making. So the money is extremely important, but it goes beyond. <laughs> Excuse me, it goes beyond finance. It has to do with incentives, it has to do with 
commitment it starts to do with welfare. These are the issues. So it's it's a financial issue. But you cannot rule out money. Money is actually crucial in the world because you need to buy this equipment. That is number one. Number two, you also need to encourage the soldiers that are going there to die. Because then when you send a man to go fight Boko Haram, he's not sure if he's going to survive it or not. Although that is what he's fighting for. So the, as crucial as that money is, the another thing is incentive. Then the talk of the leadership. These leaders, if they are sincere in this war against Boko Haram, you can imagine a former service chief of army staff, Burakai, who said the war will last for 20 years. He has already made up his mind that they are going to surround this character. He's made up his mind already. And he's not bothered. And so he said that because he, he knew that he had embezzled the funds. I'm not the one saying, the NSA is not saying it. He had embezzled the funds. And in order to give a reason for not being able to contain the situation, he said it's going to last for 20 years. Even if it's going to last for 40 years, what are your efforts in stopping this? Now, what, what are the reforms that we are released? So it's not, we are not just talking of funds. We are talking of incentives, we are talking of encouragement, we are talking of the provision of the needed arms and ammunition to fight this war. Well, uh, I mean, we, we need to move away from that, even though some people would say that uh, we live in a system where we don't seem to understand, you know, the kind of war that's been fought. And sometimes we pay attention to saying, hey, we need the Tucano jets. Or, I mean, the kind of war that we're in is not, you know, the conventional war. And so do you need the Tucano jets? Are we getting the right equipment? That's on the one hand. We also have a situation well, 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 where, we also have a situation where, where open about Qatar, just better. recently, the, you have a military personnel who's better. actually made, uh, you know, some comment saying that uh, due to the fact that the military is not properly taken care of and what have you on the payment and uh, all of the issues sur surrounding the welfare, Messi, some persons Messi. have resorted to uh, sabotage you know, arms Maybe. deal and what have you. So there's a lot that's going on beyond just saying we're chunking monies. Uh, we were, were purchasing the fighter jets and what have you. And when we look at it with the current results that we have, it, it's it's not yielding anything that we expect. Basically, you just, re you just re echoed what I said. For example, the issue of the, uh, 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 the jets you just mentioned, only the experts will tell you the relevance of that jet. But you see, it goes beyond that. That's why I say it's, an, it's seen as a gravy train. A lot of full cities have an opportunity to make money to line their pockets. A lot of these characters. So they are not really bothered. That's why I talk of the leadership. There is no sincerity of purpose. The question is, are these things done for intensely good reasons? The answer is no. Because okay. there is no commitment. And Mr. President, who is the commander in chief, is also not bothered. This is my target. Whenever these things happen, his uh, uh, media advisors will come up, spokesmen will come up to make one announcement, make one pronouncement together. And that's the end of it all. You see, so much like I always said, so my high blood pressure, the selfish blood pressure, and an enemy of concrete performance. You get up in the morning, you say you release us and that. What do services do? They don't go to him to tell him, we need this. He's a general, a retired general. You should know. They go to him to say, we need this. And he says, okay, he releases the phone. They go, they take the phone, go walk away and do whatever they want to do with it. There is no investigation, no interrogation. So they, they are not really bothered. What they really want is the money to line their pockets. That's the point. Even the soldiers, they stand to refuse. I'm not even cut up for. So you can see the level of compromise. And how will you end this war? It's just one gravy trade. So otherwise, you even need the federal government spends one trillion to contain this. Then the act is actually working. Nigerians will be happy with it. Nigerians are incensed because so much is spent on this with little or nothing to show for it. And you services cannot be extricated from that blame. They are culpable. That is why Nigerians are bitter about it. And that's why whenever they say X amount has been budgeted, that far as Nigerians are concerned, that money has just been taxed to the service state. It's not for any genuine purpose. Open a bank, Tara. Let's also look at uh, the leadership newspaper. 
Uh, it talks about after hell, it's Lokoja, and uh, it's the issue of the flooding. I'd like you to share your thoughts on this, uh, you know, the situation that has led us as a country, because whatever affects a certain part of the country affects, you know, the entire country. And we hear uh, reports saying that goods and services or, you know, uh, products are not being able to be moved to the other parts due to the current situation. Not to talk about those who've lost their lives, but really, what do you think that the government should be doing? Some quarters have said that a state of emergency should have been declared. Uh, your thoughts? Well, uh, well, the truth is, uh, it, it's, a global, it's a global disaster. We have floods all over the world right now. I mean, as America, um, it's a lot of these Western countries here, they even have the most sophisticated equipment to fight this. So there is really nothing you can do. But what Nigerians are bothered about is the rescue mission. That is what Nigerians are really bothered about. Now, the difference between what we have here in Nigeria and in other civilized life is that when you have a flood in other civilized life, it is beyond the human capacity to contain it. But in Nigeria, these things are man-made because of lack of uh, town planning or, uh, will I say lack of it, or will I say disregard to the town planning rules and town planning laws. And that's why you have this flood. You have something, most of them do on waterways, most of them do on drainages and so on. So they flood. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not a town planner. I'm not an expert in that. But it is very simple. What we expect, and given the way we live in this part of the world, I'm talking about especially in Nigeria and so on, when the shanties and so on and houses or people build, it's not just shanties. I mean, you can go and you see uh, beautiful buildings, expensive buildings, on drainages and so on. When this thing happens, because we have a system that is compromised, rather than stop the building, or rather than demolish the building, you see that what most of these people do is go to bribe the officials and they turn the other way. It is only when you have the disaster you see people shouting and talking. Then the response system too. And look, when these things happen, Within seconds, within minutes, you see this person moving in to save lives and property. That is also not the case in this part of the world. There is always a delay, and so much damage would have been caused before you see the government responding. So these are the issues. Otherwise, if you of flood, it's a global issue. On daily basis, you see in America, in some of these countries, uh, in this floods, uh, oh, this floods take place. But the fact is, the response system mechanism is much better. And two, they have the sophisticated weapon to at least do a damage control. In this civilized life, here it is not the case. And three, the flooding in those civilized countries are not occasioned by the disregard for town planning laws. But in this part of the country, most times disregard for town planning laws. Don't build on this place. This is the waterway. Don't build on this place. Don't do this. The authorities will get money, will receive bribe, and allow this character to go ahead and build. And will only respond, belatedly in most cases, when the disaster has occurred. It's so sad. It's unfortunate. But even those who are involved to cannot escort themselves. Because they know that what they are doing is wrong, but probably because of the situation the harshness of the economy. Well, they know that all they do is wrong, but they still fly. For example, you see a building that is derelict, and you know that the integrity of that big building is in, is, is in question. You see cracks all over, pieces all over. Yet you want to move into that building, believing that while you are still in that building, nothing will happen. So I will even tell you, God is on my side, nothing will happen. I mean, it is so ridiculous. So most times, even the victims are guilty of what we accuse the government of. If you know that this is the water, level, you don't need to go and bribe anybody to it. Because eventually it is going to affect you. And all your money you spend on the building will deal with, including your life and the lives of your loved ones. So, the NA, the, what is it called? The, um, uh, sorry, this information agency, I've forgotten that name again. 
We have to do a lot, a whole lot of publicity on this. I'm talking of uh, Noah, Noah, not sure if there is anything. We have to do a whole lot. Noah is practically sleeping. Noah is practically inactive, as we speak right now. All that is well, it has been sleeping. It is, it is, it is training is checking itself, it's training in his duty in terms of awareness creation. It has to do a lot of this. So why are you also going to blame the government? You're also going to blame the victims. Uh, uh, Open I mean, quickly, let's let's just move this on. It's still on the leadership newspaper, and we're talking about you know the current situation in Lokoja. But you have rightly stated, although you have tilted to the other side of the divide, uh, you have stated that this is uh, a global phenomenon, and uh, we understand that you know flooding happens across. But some people believe uh, that you know the flooding that we're experiencing in Nigeria is man-made because of human activities and you know other issues that you have mentioned to some extent. And this particular one is that I mean, I mean if you have the NIMEX putting out information, are we not supposed to be proactive? Because when you talk about natural disasters, the disasters happen. Uh, probably, 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 probably your ears are not inclined. If your ears are inclined, you all you said is what I said. I told you, I said the government is culpable because they receive bribes and turn the other way. I said all that. Uh, so what you are saying, you only reacting what I said. I said, including the victims who go to bribe, knowing too well that what they are doing is wrong. So I told you, I said. Bro, it's a national, it's an international phenomenon. But then, in Nigeria, the difference is one: the government officials are compromised, and two: the victims themselves are equally guilty. They are culpable because they bribe the government officials to come to, 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 to be compromised, and that is why it is manly. You know that this is a drainage. Why build on it? This is a waterway. Why build on it? And at the end of the day, you spend hundreds of millions on the beautiful edifice only for it to be demolished or washed away by water. Now, it goes beyond just the edifice. You're also talking of you, your life, and the lives of your loved ones. I said all this. I said it's both Monday. We agree that it's, it's an international uh, phenomenon, but in Nigeria, the difference, that's what I said. I said, but in Nigeria, the difference is that in most cases, it is Monday. And also, the rescue system is bad when this thing happens. It's bad. So you are practically reacting exactly what I just said. The Daily Trust, uh, the People's Democratic Party, begins her presidential campaign today, or they started their campaign already. Uh, what are your thoughts, really? Especially when yes, it feels like there I, has of course, is not of course, I, They have to start the, the ban. Uh, as a lead on presidential campaign. A lot of people thought that given the, the schism in the party, uh, there might be a delay. But, I mean, no one man is indispensable in this whole world. No one man. And Mr. President, the presidential candidate, the former vice of the country, will not put anything on hold because of a microscopic view. Why the campaigns will go on, the, the negotiations can continue. And if it comes to future, better. If it doesn't, fine. It's not going to say because A, B, C, uh, E, F, D, and Co. are, are good. Therefore, my ambition should be on hold. No, it's not going to be. So, and I believe they took it to uh, Akwaibom because he is the chairman of the campaign council. That is number one. And number two, they know that Akwaibom is, is going to be a friendly environment. And not really that there is going to be a host where you have uh, a dictator who wants to frustrate all efforts uh, in the state? Even if you look at the recent history that he signed, you realize that he's trying to frustrate uh, other political parties from campaigning. That's what he's trying to do. So, the presidential campaign will start. I mean, the INEC has lifted the ban. And what will the presidential campaign be doing other than to campaign? And that is what they do. They have to kick start. They have to kick off. And so, the kick off is in a album today. Well, Funabo, thank you so much. We have to go now, and uh, we appreciate your thoughts and making our time to be with us this morning on Off the Press, on the Breakfast. Thank you. All right, then. Have a great day.
and that's the march we can take this morning on off the press of Punabon Katara as a public affairs analyst has been great with his thoughts on some of our national dailies we'll return tomorrow uh, with the paper review. But in the meantime, we'll take a break. But just before then, let's tell you what happened today in history being the 10th of October. Stay with us.